Hello, and welcome to another world-famous video from the Word of God Ministries, helping to explain whole Bible Christianity. My name is Bruce Bertram. This is the start of a series examining and contrasting the visible church and the body of Christ. We'll compare the picture we get from the Word with the one we see around us. One of the standard visible church teachings is that a new thing called the church was created by God at Pentecost. It is taught that God got fed up with Israel and decided to start fresh. They say he didn't really mean any of the previous dealings with Israel. His goal all along was the new thing. Several versions of this story have the church either, one, inserted as an added parenthesis between the old and new physical Israel, or two, merging with a spiritual Israel. Both the inserted and merging versions are really just trying to replace Israel. The inserted theory says that after the new church is complete, it will be removed at something called the rapture, and Israel's program will resume. The merging theory is close to the truth, but it's not the church doing the merging. The merging is with believers and the olive tree. Believers are grafted into or merged with the existing Israel olive tree, as Paul reveals more on this in uh, future videos. Supposedly, the separate and brand new church entity for all replacement theories got started in Acts chapter 2. These things are not from the Bible. They're not even close to what is in there. That is, if the Bible is allowed to speak for itself. At the root, teachings like these are developed to chip away the absolute truth of God's word and steal some authority. The Bible has only one body of Christ, which has existed since the beginning. See for yourself. Look at the Greek or Hebrew words and you won't see the church anywhere. There are only believers and unbelievers, obedient and disobedient, law-abiding and law-breaking. Roles or jobs might be different, but there is only one body, as it is written. For even as the body is one, and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we are all, we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. 1 Corinthians 12, 12-14. Twelve the English word church itself has a murky origin. It is used to translate the New Testament Greek word ecclesia, or ecclesia pronounced ecclesia, or means, and it means assembly or congregation, but not all the time. For instance, in Stephen's speech, Acts chapter 7, he uses the word ecclesia to describe Israel, but the translator used the word congregation instead, as it is written. This is the one who was in the congregation... Ecclesia, in the wilderness, together with the angel who was speaking to him on Mount Sinai, and who was with our fathers. And he received living oracles to pass on to you. Acts 7.38. See also Hebrews 2.12. There are times when it's okay to translate a single Greek or Hebrew word into two or more different English words, or the other way around. For instance, several Greek words for love are all translated by the one English word, love. But this word is not one of those words. There's no good reason to pick the word church as opposed to assembly or congregation. To be accurate, we should use the word church in all places where the body of Christ is spoken of, as in the church in the wilderness of the King James Version Acts 7.38, or all uses of the word ecclesia should be translated as congregation or even assembly. The reason they are not is simple preference or a deliberate attempt to hijack Bible authority and transfer it to the church. Many extra biblical doctrines don't allow the body, confused with the church, to exist before the resurrection. The Catholic Church illustrates this with some hijacking of words when translating in the King James Version now called the Authorized Version, with the KJV, they used the word church instead of assembly or congregation. 
At the time it came out, the KJV was very controversial and caused many denominations to reject using it for quite a while, mostly because of the word church. The church is visible and is known for its organizational structures and belief systems, creeds, etc. The body of Christ, on the other hand, is organized around the word, and the Christ is the head, and is known for its fruit or actions. The church and synagogue has people who claim to follow him but do not. The body consists of those who actually follow him. The church agog is simply a congregation or assembly or a series of congregations or assemblies just like Israel was and is a congregation. The church agog and Israel have part of the body in them but they are not 100% filled with believers. The modern day church tends to think it is special, separate, and somehow more acceptable, so it promotes a different name for itself. It's funny how a Baptist church never plants a Presbyterian church, or a Catholic church never starts an assembly of God. Isn't it funny that Calvary Chapel always starts other Calvary chapels and never a vineyard? How about a synagogue starting a Baptist church? If reaching the lost is the goal, why is it that churches always reproduce after their own kind? Are they really reaching the lost or building up their club? Makes you wonder. One of Satan's biggest successes, besides convincing people he doesn't exist, is the idea of the church. What I mean is, generally people think the church is God's and anyone outside of church must be an unbeliever. Believers are supposed to be members of the church in whatever form. The church must be the good guys, and the not-churched must be the bad guys. But this setup is as fake as professional wrestling. This is not how the Word does it. The Bible says that the good guys do what God says. Sheep. Bad guys don't. Goats. The mother, brother, and sister of Jesus is the one who does God's will, Matthew 12, Matthew 12, 48 through 50. Just look at mom and dad in the garden, or Cain and Abel, or Saul and David, or believing and unbelieving Israel, or, well, you get my drift. The words assembly, uh, Hebrew kahal, and congregation, Hebrew edah, are used for Israel, especially when they are camped out at Mount Sinai. So the word assembly equals congregation, equals ecclesia, equals kahal, equals Ada, equals church, equals synagogue, equals multitude. They all mean pretty much the same thing. There are small congregations and big assemblies, but there is only one called out body. The name Christian, Acts 11, 26, 26, 28, 1 Peter 4, 16, was bestowed on those who were partisans of the Christ early on, sort of like a political term. But there are lots of unbelievers that would call themselves a partisan, yet refuse to actually do what the church says, like Constantine. So this is where the overlap comes in. People can call themselves partisans, maybe even believers, and sometimes they are believers, then form a club and call it a church. However, like Keith Green used to say, standing in a garage doesn't make you a Porsche. Thanks for watching. We've got more on the subject of the body versus the visible church, and you can catch uh, in our book, uh, Whole Bible Christianity, or in the other videos on our channel. A draft of the book is on our website, www.wholebible.com. We also have a blog accessed from the website if you've got questions and want more discussion. I'm Bruce Bertram from the Word of God Ministries. Shalom.